I think it was pretty similar in nature uh, to the issue that Ian brought up. Um, but maybe I might even be like a few steps behind. Um, I just don't feel like I have a good process for identifying inferences um, and that I maybe don't allocate enough time. I mean, I spend roughly, I think, three minutes as well um, trying to come up with inferences, but I find myself moving quite slowly through questions sometimes, like having to diagram literally every answer option um, to try and get to a quite like find the answer to a question which seems pretty ineffective and so I like often question whether I found all the right inferences and so I, I just don't really have a good process and I don't really know when to feel comfortable to like move on from my setup um, and start tackling the questions um, so yeah pretty similar in nature to what Ian was talking about and how long have you been studying for? Um, probably about two months, but varying in intensity. But how many, how many games? How many games have you uh, done? I have definitely lost count. I've focused mostly on logic games during the past two months, though. And now I'm doing a lot more like just general practice through Khan Academy. Um, but my focus has almost always been logic games when it comes to the self-guided study. Okay. Okay, good. So you've used resources and that's mostly more the theory. I mean, they have drills, they have examples. What about working out of the actual LSAT exams and just doing sections once you've gotten that foundation? Yeah, I've done a few sections as well, just like timed individual logic game sections. And I guess part of the problem is that I find myself performing better when I'm practicing um, versus when I'm taking the actual test. So part of me thinks that it's just like nerves um, and that I'm like very conscious of time. So I'm moving too quickly when I'm taking it under time conditions. Um, but even when I've tried to be like cognizant of that, when I'm actually taking a full practice test, I'm generally not doing as well as I did in like drills and under timed conditions. Okay. So there's accuracy, there's pacing, and there's endurance. That's one of the frameworks underlying my LSAT study plans, both inside the course and outside the course. And so it sounds like accuracy is good when it's individual sections or individual games, and it's outside of the context of a full-timed exam. So part of this may just be getting used to the rhythm of the timing with sections strict 35 minutes in that context and then in the context of all the other stuff going on. So if you're saying full exams, I'm assuming that means reasoning and reading comp as well are in that mix. Is that correct? Yeah. And you said you've done a lot of work on games, but maybe not so much on the other stuff. Yeah. So in what way could doing a full exam with the other stuff mixed in, how could that impact your performance on everything? Yeah, I see what you're saying. Um, I think like the mental endurance is a, a big factor for sure. Um, just sitting down, especially with the time tests that I take through Khan Academy, those are a full three hours. Um, it's not in the flex format. And so um, there's just a lot more like ex exhaustion. Um, and so that could definitely affect my performance in logic games. I'm not going into them as sharply. Um, yeah, and maybe just general anxiety about the other sections as well um, might be impacting my performance in the logic games. And when are you taking the exam? I'm set to take it on the uh, at the end of August, but I'm not super attached. I think it really depends how much my performance improves over the next few weeks. Okay. And so what is your plan for the next few weeks? Yeah. So currently, um, my like foremost plan was just to continue with Khan Academy, um, and doing like generalized study because I was starting to think that maybe my like underlying strengths are really with reading comprehension, um, and the logical reasoning. And so that I should start trying to like study for those sections formally. 
Um, and so I had like a study plan through Khan Academy of doing a few hours like every other night and then taking a practice test every weekend. Nice. I like it. And what are your other obligations between now and August 29th? I have a few. <laughs> okay. What are they? Um, I am going to be moving um, in the middle of August, which is like a big worry of mine and part of the reason why I'm not attached to August 29th, just because that's obviously a huge time commitment. Um, that's really the biggest one that's sort of at the forefront of my mind. So the idea of taking it in August, August 29th, and we're speaking now about one month prior to that. So does, does that give you anxiety? Does that feel like it could work? Maybe. How do you feel about it overall? How do I feel about the August 29th test? Yeah. I'm, I feel a little shaky just because I think I have a lot of test anxiety to get over. Um, so like this is diving into other things, but um, I generally like am not performing as well in logic game, uh, sorry, in um, reading comprehension and um, the logical reasoning as well as I did like at the beginning when I started studying or when I took my first diagnostic even. Um, and so I think like I, there's sort of been this like, I don't know, counter effect to like studying where like the more I see the issues that I encounter, the more I sort of like self-fulfill. Um, and so I think again, like it'll be really important to see how I perform on the next like couple practice tests I take, like the full practice test to see if I can sort of overcome some of that test taking anxiety. Um, so yeah, a little shaky. Okay. 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 I think that's a reasonable approach. I want to, I want to play a game with you for a second. Let's pretend two, one of two things. Let's pretend that you're not currently registered for August 29th. Mm -hmm. Would you register for it today? Oh gosh, that's a good question. Um, I guess my first inclination is to say no. Um, but if I want to apply the cycle, I think it's best to take the test in August and see that, see what my score would look like, um, which I guess is why I would probably register anyways, even though I don't think it's like the best course of action, if that makes sense. Yeah, I hear that. And I'll, I'll give my answer on that in a moment, just from a practical perspective as to what I know about admissions. But before I do that, I want to play a different game with you. Let's pretend that the August 29th LSAT was canceled completely, not even a flex. It's just off the menu. The yeah. next available LSAT is October 3rd. How do you feel about that? Ad admissions considerations and timeline aside, I'll get to that in a moment. Okay. Um, I, that would be great if I could just take it in August. Yeah. Do you, do you mean August or do you mean October? I'm oh, sorry. I mean October. Okay. Okay. Well, I'll just, I'll just jump in with a fact for a moment, which is that October is perfectly fine. You don't need to do August 29th. October 3rd is okay. Yes, all else being equal, applying marginally earlier is a tiny bit better. But if it's giving you anxiety to take it a month from now, and you believe that you could do even just a couple points better by doing October 3rd, it's mm -hmm. totally fine. Even November would be okay. January becomes a little bit iffy, but October and November are totally fine. Hmm. Do you think, sorry, I don't mean to command time. This no, that's okay. That's okay. Um, but do you think that um, like if I really would like to have like the best positioning for getting um, financial aid or like merit scholarships that your answer would stay the same? Correct. Yes. October and November are still perfectly fine for merit aid for scholarships. Yes, it's true that as time goes on, it becomes a little bit less uh, less available. It does work against you slightly, but again, if you can get even just a couple points more, totally worth it. Things do change when you get into the following calendar year, meaning you're taking the LSAT or you're applying in January. So there is a, it does diminish over time, but again, uh, August versus October, there's not really a significant difference there because both of those are so early. And by the way, just as, as one comment about you, you're not wanting to take up time, it's fine. Be selfish here because 
allowing us to go deeper is actually serving everyone else here in this room and everyone else who's watching this later as well, because your questions apply to everybody else who's on right now. Everybody else here I'm expecting is applying to law school sometime soon, very likely this cycle. And so all of this is relevant to everyone else as well. Thank you for answering my questions. Of course, sure, Dana. And by the way, even when you're not being coached by me directly here, everyone watching, take it as if you are being coached because you can benefit, especially those of you live with me on this call right now. There's a certain energy to this conversation and all of you can feel free to bring in your questions and concerns as well. And think about how it might you have asked this question, what might you have responded when I was asking Dana these questions about how you feel about August versus October. All of that is very relevant to deciding between any two particular test dates. And thank you for playing with me, Dana. Thanks for tuning into the show. Please subscribe if you haven't done so already to be notified of new episodes as I release them. And feel free to reach out if you need anything at all as you move forward with your prep. I'm happy to help however I can. In the meantime, I wish you all the best and take care.